It's, it's interesting because <laughs> what you've just said leads right into yeah. our, our interview that's coming up here. I mean, you, you talked about you know, uh, being able to ask the right questions. Being able to ask the like, right questions mm -hmm. is often being able to see, see what the heck is going on. Mm -hmm. So you know, when, when we think of the visual workplace or observing a process firsthand to look for waste, we typically think of something you can see, like factories or the factory floor. But what happens if there is no real workplace? What happens if the workplace or the gemba is in somebody's head on their computer? How do you monitor and, and control and uh, assess, as a manager, what you can't see? How do you see ways? How do you look for ways to improve? That is exactly the issue with knowledge workers and the subject of uh, one of this week's articles. You can better manage what you can see by columnist Jim Benson. And Jim joins us today to describe a bit about this problem and uh, hopefully some of the solutions. Good morning, Jim. Morning, Dirk. How's it going? It's a comfortable day here in Seattle. Hey, how about those Seahawks? How about those Seahawks? That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's Blue Friday. It's mandated that you mandated. wear something today. Yes. If you, uh, if you don't, you will be shunned. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Jim, first of all, describe, uh, kind of set up for us the, the situation that we just talked about where um, uh, you, you've got knowledge workers and you mm -hmm. can't really see their work. Just tell us a little bit about that situation. So... Knowledge work in general, uh, the workplace, the, um, the manufactory of that work is, is our brains. And I can't see inside your head, you can't see inside my head. And basically, the reason that we lose control of knowledge work is because there is no Gemba to go to, as you were talking about. There's, the Gemba actually becomes this very ethereal set of negotiations that we've made with each other about what's going to be done, how it's going to be done, who's responsible for things, um, what the level of complicatedness of those things are, um, what points we're going to get together and collaborate, and so on and so forth. And when um, my background uh, initially started in urban planning and, um, and uh, transportation engineering, so I used to work on very large projects like building subway systems and uh, create and freeways and things like that. And I, I was managing teams of sometimes 100, 200, 300 knowledge workers in many different companies and everything was a coordination game. Uh, in about 2000, I left that and I started a software company and I, it struck me that it was strange that all of the problems that we had managing hundreds of people were exactly the same problems that we had managing a dozen or two dozen software engineers. And, and, and what, are, it all came what are some of the problems, Jim? I mean, if you can just, uh, when you have this issue where you can't, you can't really see what's going on, so to speak, what mm -hmm. are some of the issues that come up? Yeah, so, uh, you know, let's say that, uh, you know, the three of us have decided that we're going to build a thing. Uh, a software thing or a book or some other some other mental creative object and um, we've negotiated between us who's going to work on what we know you know when we want to have things done and what they are going to look like so we create a spec and that spec says all of these negotiations that we've made uh, it's a, it's supposed to have negotiated our risk away so that we've dealt with all of the risky items up front. And then we all go off and we start working. And in knowledge work, everything is discovery. We're always learning as we're working. Things are changing as we're working. The level of variation in knowledge work is very high. So what happens is we start to drift. So all three of us are still working. Uh, we have a narrative in our heads about what makes sense. But what makes sense is based on what our original negotiation was and what we're finding as we move along. So we start to act based on our observations, which we're not sharing with each other. And so Mike has a set of observations and he goes off in this direction. Dirk has a set of observations. He goes off in this direction. I have a set of observations. I go off in my own direction. It's all incredibly logical to all of us. <laughs> But since we can't see what's in each other's heads and we don't know what those, what those situations are, then we quickly lose control 
of the project itself. So, so what you're saying is that on, on, in a factory situation, you would see, physically see, that somebody was Absolutely. doing that maybe wasn't on target with what the goals of, of the project were, but you don't necessarily know what Mike is thinking, what I'm thinking, what, uh, you know what you're thinking, um, but you yep. don't necessarily know what we're thinking, so you don't know whether we're on, you may, th I guess what you're saying is that, is that you maybe as the project manager are assuming that everybody is yep. doing what they said they were going to do, but they may be completely off on another tangent because of just the changing conditions of what they're discovering as they're working on, let's say, a programming project? Yeah, and, and worse than that, my assumptions are based on the tangent that I'm on, and I'm not even aware I'm on a tangent. And how do you bring, so how do you bring visibility to a project? What, what's kind of the solution for this whole thing? I mean, you mentioned that they okay. tried using, uh, in your example, you were talking about an IT company. You said they tried using a Kanban system, but that isn't, wasn't even really working for them. Well, so the, um, the Kanban system in the story that they started to use was incomplete. Uh, so when we're working with knowledge organizations, uh, you know, be they software developers or be they, you know, people at the CIA or be they bankers or whomever, um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create some sort of visual control around the work. And the visual control is based on a value stream. And often value stream mapping for knowledge workers is probably one of the funniest things you'll ever be part of because everybody has started to work on a project. You usually come in in the middle and they have an idea that they've all de developed up front about what that project looks like and then they've all drifted. So by the time you get together with them, they all have assumptions about how the value stream operates that are completely wrong or completely at odds with the assumptions of other people. Um, so we want to have one canonical value stream. And that value stream can change every day. It doesn't have to be set in stone, but it has to be shared. So every day people could come in and say, okay, day, today's slightly different, or I had this epiphany last night, we should actually do this. But you want the visual control to be there because it's creating a shared story. Um, that shared story becomes the physical manifestation of a mental gemba. And, and how, are you, how are you actually uh, recreating this visually? I mean, how are people looking at this value stream? How are they visually keeping on course then? Okay. So let's say the value stream is on a giant whiteboard and it says, you know, for so say for IT or software development, it might be business analysis, coding, testing, integration, release. Um, that's the value stream there that creates columns that come down. Uh, work items are written onto post-it notes and they flow through that value stream. So we start to make it clear to everybody, especially the people who are working, especially the knowledge workers, that there really is a process and that process can be incredibly fluid. Again, it can change every day. <laughs> Uh, but as long as everybody recognizes how it's changing, that's the important thing, uh, as opposed to now where it does honestly change every day, but it changes every day via whim and not necessarily um, anything else. So uh, the, there's a lot of differences between how we apply lean on the shop floor and how we apply lean to software development, but the key component there is that we want to limit the work in progress, which the board also does. So each of those columns will have a number above it. Uh, it's the number of tickets that can be active in the column at any given point in time. And then we can start to balance, we can create a pull system, we can start to achieve flow, and we can get real cycle time metrics, we can get real lead time metrics for knowledge work. Okay. Well, Jim, uh, you know, we're, we're just about out of time here, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, thanks for, I, I just found the article actually really interesting. Anybody who wants to read that article, if you go down below the player page, there's a link out to the, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the article by Jim Benson. But I thought it was just really interesting. I never thought about that aspect where how do you, how do you look at what a knowledge worker is doing? How do you keep on track of it? Which I think, as you pointed out, is probably one of the reasons why so many software projects uh, end up taking a lot longer than anybody had had ever uh, intended. Well, and, it, and 
It was it was software, but it was also you know it was it was also when I was in urban planning. The the problems are completely coordinate. Okay. Uh, the problem is that it's very hard to engage in kaizen when what you're improving is invisible. Exactly. Now you have a you have a course coming up pretty soon with uh, Mark Graven, Mark right? Graven, yeah. Right, right. Two of them actually. Uh, they are in March. Uh, and one of them is in Phoenix, and the other one is in San Antonio. Uh, and if you go to um, uh, personalkanban.com uh, or to moduscooperandi.com, the links should be easily findable okay. uh, to sign up for the courses. But Mark and I are both teaching um, the, man the basically lean management of knowledge work. Okay. Well, terrific. So personal kanban. Dot com. That's an easier one to remember here, mm -hmm. since we don't have it mm -hmm. up on the screen. Well, Jim, uh, thanks for joining us today. All right, thank you. Okay, so long. Thanks, Jim. We'll see you yep. next time. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, Jim. Bye. Good Great. stuff there with, with Jim. And, yep. uh, I, I, li I like that. Idea. We're knowledge workers ourselves. So, I mean, that, that was one that really resonated with us. We have a Kanban board in our editorial. Yeah, we do. And, <laughs> we do. And, uh, you know, we, right. we, we understand that, that issue yep. of, of tracking the work as, as it progresses through the system. So, good stuff there. Thank yep. you, Jim.